What does it take to make stylized pine trees? Turns out, it's a little complicated, and kind of fun. In this video, I'm diving into the chaos of creating a stylized pine tree. This is what happened. To start out, I created a block out in Blender to get an idea of the scale and proportions. The trunk is a simple cylinder tapered toward the top with several loop cuts along its length that are then scaled and randomly offset so the trunk is a little wonky and not too perfect. For the branches, I create a plane mesh and add a subdivision modifier to it, adding several loop cuts and a center cut. I then push the vertices around into the rough shape of a pine branch, giving it a bend and dip like you can see in these references. Now our pivot point is where the branch would connect to the trunk, turn on snapping to face project, and start duplicating your branches around the trunk. I added a few smaller ones right at the crown of the tree to give it a little cap. Block out some small branches and then duplicate them around the trunk, just like the leaves. We have our initial block out, grab everything and export it as an FBX to Unreal Engine. I was checking the scale and proportions by running around it in the first person map. I noticed the branches virtually disappear from certain angles. Taking another look at references, I need to pull down the sides of the branch meshes to give it a tent-like shape. Something I file away for the next pass. I was happy with the proportions and scaling by this point. After making some small adjustments, I moved on to creating a tileable bark texture for the trunk and branches. Grabbing a 2x2 plane in Blender, I scale it up slightly. This gives me some margin near the edges for ensuring the sculpted detail will tile properly. I chose one of the basic DynaMesh sphere projects from Lightbox in ZBrush, and then imported the plane I just created in Blender. Turning off smooth and dividing it several times to give me more resolution to sculpt with. A neat little trick to help with sculptable tileables is to go into the brush menu, curve tab, and then turn wrap mode up to 1. As you can see now, when I sculpt on my slightly larger than 2x2 plane, I can see where the seams for tiling would be. At first, I sculpted a bark with a higher level of detail, but after bringing it into Unreal with the final textures, I found it was too noisy and had a lumpy feeling to it. It wasn't really the look I was going for, so I ended up just adding in some simple grain detail using the Orbs Cracks brush. This worked for me, but feel free to experiment and find the bark style and detail you're looking for. I baked my bark mesh to a 2x2 plane in Substance Painter, and then I duplicated that mesh in Blender into a cross shape so I could re-import to Substance Painter and see how it looked when it was tiled whilst texturing. The texture was very simple. I had a reddish brown base, a blurred edge highlight using my curvature map as a mask, and then I used a multiply layer with an orangey color and a mask that used my ambient inclusion map with an inverted levels filter to emphasize the grain a little more. Adding too much detail in the texture, I find made it very obvious in Unreal that it was tiling, so I opted for this simple basic version, which we can add more detail to in Unreal's material graph without having the obvious tiling patterns. After mapping the trunk and small twig branches to the tileable bark texture, next came creating the textures for the branches, I wanted to try hand painting some leaf textures instead of baking this time. I created three plane meshes in Blender following the shape of my previous blackout branches, and this time I pulled the sides down into a tent shape. Two of the meshes would be variations for the larger branches, and a smaller mesh would be used near the top of the tree. I created materials for each of the leaves so I could easily identify them whilst placing on the trunk, and then I unwrapped them all to the same texture space. Since I wanted to paint the textures by hand, I didn't know what shape the branches would take, so I couldn't optimize the branch meshes straight away. A workaround for this was to duplicate the branch meshes with Alt-D instead of Shift-D. This way, the meshes would be linked, and if I made adjustments to one of them, it would propagate to all of them. Very handy if I needed to make future adjustments. Now I had the trunk with the branch meshes ready to paint. I made sure they would all be on the same paint layer by having them share the same material. And then I brought the whole thing into Substance Painting. Since the UVs all overlapped, I was able to paint on the three branches laid out next to the tree and see how it would look in real time on the final asset. I created a base fill layer with an opacity channel and set the opacity to something low. This way I could see the shape of the branches as I painted, but could also still see how much space I had to work with. A fill layer with a green color and fully opaque came next, and this is where I defined the shape of my branches. Starting with a blobby mess, I slowly refined it down, adding in more cuts and gaps to the edges, giving it a more feathery look. Once I was happy with the overall shape, I created a second layer with a slightly brighter green color, painting over the top with the brush opacity set to pen pressure to give it a more layered look. 
I tried faking a drop shadow by then duplicating this layer and putting it below and setting it to multiply. A second overpaint layer with the same color as the first, I smoothed out near the center of the branch, giving it a nice smooth gradiented look. Next was two more layers, a lighter green again on the tips and some brown strokes for a little more color variation. I added in some darker thin lines to hint at more detail in the branches, added a middle line for the wooden stick part that faded out toward the end, and a darker gradient at the base of the branch using a multiply layer and planar projection setting. I repeated the same workflow for the next two branches and my tree was almost finished. Back in Blender, I added a flare to the base of my trunk and made the overall shape a little more wonky. Then creating two more variations, one with less leaves and a smaller, younger tree. I knew I would want wind effect in my branches and a color gradient on my trunk in Unreal. This is where the linked meshes came in handy. I added some vertex paint to my branches with black near the base as a mask so the wind wouldn't affect them there. And then they would appear to stay attached to the trunk. I did the same for the tree trunk and smaller twiggy branches, filling the vertex paint to black and adding a white mask near the base of the trunk where I could implement a gradient. After that, it was all ready to go and I exported everything to Unreal. All that was left now was creating the materials for the leaves and bark. I started with the bark material, pulling in the textures to the material graph. I hooked up my base color, roughness and normal maps. Next, I added some logic to be able to change the tiling on these textures by multiplying a texture coordinate by a scalar parameter with a default value of one and plugging it into the UV slot on the texture samples. Using a vertex color node as an alpha for a linear interpolate node, I was able to define the color for the gradient at the base of the trunk with a vector three. I then multiplied the vertex color by another scalar parameter I called gradient opacity, and this allowed me to tweak how strong the gradient would be. Using the same logic, but this time with a noise texture instead of the vertex color as an alpha for the lerp, I was able to add in some texture variation to the overall truck. A quick little node graph to adjust the normal map strength, I added two component masks, one blue and one red and green. I was then able to multiply the red and green channels by a scalar parameter before appending all the channels back together and plugging them back into the material slot. The final piece of the puzzle was to animate the rotation of the tree based on its pivot point. This would make it look as though it was bending and swaying in the wind. I used the rotate about axis node for this, utilizing time and a sine node to create the back and forth swing. I won't go into depth on the confusing setup here. I will leave a screenshot on screen and if you want to copy it, you can pause the video now. With our bark material now done, I moved on to the branches. I set the blend mode to masked and brought in my textures, hooking up the alpha from the diffuse texture to my opacity slot and the others to their corresponding slots. I created some controls to adjust the color and look of my leaves using a multiply it with a scalar parameter. You can change how bright the texture is. A desaturation node with a scalar parameter and a minus one node allowed me to control the saturation of the colors. Next, I used a blend overlay node with a vector three plugged into the blend slot and the base texture in the base slot. I then lurked between the result and the base texture using another scalar parameter for the opacity. Here you can see how that works. A quick way to add a little more variation to our trees, I used the object pivot point in the world, divided it by 500, and used that as the percentage value in a hue shift node. Now any time I change the position of the tree in the world, the hue shift value changes, giving the tree a different color. I then leapt between my texture results so far and the hue shift nodes with a scalar parameter to control the intensity of this effect. At this point, I changed the shading model of the material to two-sided foliage, and check the two-sided checkbox just below it. This allowed me to give the branches a look as if light was passing through them. A vector three parameter called SSS color into the subsurface color and a scalar parameter to control the power into the opacity slot. In my material instance, I set this to dark green and the scalar parameter to a value of one. I needed the branches to follow along with the tree trunk when swaying in the wind. So I copy and pasted the nodes from the tree trunk material to the branch material and then using an add node, I combined it with some simple grass wind to give it some more subtle wind shake. Using the vertex color we painted in Blender as an alpha in a lerp so it doesn't affect the branch base where it connects to the trunk. And that was the materials all set up. I can now place, rotate and scale my trees around the scene and voila, you have yourself a forest.
You can get the project files for these trees, including the Unreal Engine scene on my Gumroad, link in the description. You can also find other tutorials and resources there, such as creating a stylized game-ready asset from scratch, start to finish, or simply resources for learning texturing and sculpting for game art. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and thank you very much for supporting the channel, and I will see you in the next one.